beautiful East Tennessee in the foothills of the Smoky Mountains, you're listening to the Sherry Voluntary Show, and I certainly do appreciate you spending your time with me. Today, our episode is going to be a little bit different than it usually is. I recently had the privilege of guest hosting Real News, which is the morning program on WETR 92.3 FM here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And uh, I had a great guest, and his name is Clay Davis. And you may already be familiar with him and his work with the Tenth Amendment Center. Uh, And what we talk about on the show was the Fourth Amendment Protection Act, which is something he is working to get adopted by states around the country. It's already been adopted in some, and we're going to fill you in on those details on today's show. Take care and enjoy, and peace until next time. Good morning, Knoxville. You are listening to Real News on Talk Radio 92.3 FM and AM 760. It's Friday, December 28th, 2018, but not for long. You can't say it much longer. Yeah, I am your hostess, Miss Sherry Voluntary. Mm. And with me in the studio is Mr. Vinny Vineyard. And we are filling in for the vacationing Mr. Henry and Nick. So, Nick Crawford. The producer told me something interesting during the break. Yeah? She said, I can swear some. <laughs> so I want you to say, I'm Sherry Voluntary. I'm Sherry Voluntary? Hell yeah. <laughs> I need like a button that says that every time. Like whenever I make a point, like, yeah. or make Hell me a sandwich. Yeah. Like that's what I need. <laughs> so there you go. I used to love it when I did the show with the with the guys, um, our old show, Speaking Freely. And uh, I always wanted to like, Say, make me a sandwich, but I'd forget. <laughs> I'd forget. Like, this is who I am. I'm lame. Okay, I'm lame. Well, soundboards are fun. <laughs> They're very 1998. You have Dr. Yeah. Phil. Or, I don't know. <laughs> we did have one uh, clip, that one sound that said, um, what difference does it make anyway? You know, that was a pretty good one. Was but, it? Yeah. I don't like it. Yeah. I mean, I didn't like it when she said it, but, you know. <laughs> It's great now, but on the line, uh oh, we have a friend of mine, uh, and he is with is Mr. Clay Davis. He's with the Tenth Amendment Center. Now, the Tenth Amendment is it that the one you can't throw spiders at pregnant women? What's the yeah? Tenth? Yeah, that's it. Okay, that's it. That's what I thought. <laughs> I slept a lot during civics class. Apparently, yeah. Uh, yeah so uh, he's with the Tenth Amendment Center, and they do a lot of great work. And a lot of what they do is reminding people of what the Constitution actually says, oh. left and right. Because people tend to forget when they have something they want <laughs> done. Uh, so, so they do a lot of work on nullification, you know, getting, yeah. keeping, just ignoring bad laws. Uh, so um, he is going to They must be busy. Us. Right. He is, uh, he has got a bill going or a model for a bill called the Fourth Amendment Protection Act. Uh-oh. And so he's going to tell us a little bit about that. Hi, Clay. Are you there? Hey, good morning, Sherry. Hi, Vinny. How are you this morning? Fantastic, doing great. <laughs> doing great. It's great to hear from you. So we're it's, really it's interested. Really good to be on. Yeah, we're really interested to hear about this Fourth Amendment Protection Act. Uh, and, and so you you've been with the Tenth Amendment Center for a, a while now, and uh, you guys have worked on some great stuff. But this is really really interesting. And it, to me, it's it's kind of sad that we need a Fourth Amendment Protection Act, right? Like we need to enact other laws to protect laws that are already there. So, <laughs> yeah, it really is sad that we actually have to have a grassroots move, movement to protect our privacy. <laughs> um, but the, the, you're right, Sherry. The uh, the Fourth Amendment Protection Act is uh, it's a very exciting, groundbreaking, innovative bill uh, that essentially bans material support and resources for all warrantless federal surveillance programs at the state level. Um, it's become pretty clear that uh, legislators in Washington, D.C. are not interested in protecting our privacy because they keep renewing uh, FISA Section 702, which tramples all over our privacy. Yeah. Um, so clearly, if, if Washington's not... Uh, not going to be interested in, in taking the proper action, then the rightful remedy would be for us to fall upon legislatures at the state level. And what this bill is really awesome, uh, what makes it really awesome is it prohibits the state and its political subdivisions from assisting, participating with, or providing material support or resources to a federal agency to enable it to collect or facilitate in the collection or use of a person's electronic data. Um, one stipulation, uh, it, it does provide, uh, 
where there are only five conditions that can apply that would allow um, for the use of this type of surveillance. Um, the person has to have given, uh, been given informed consent. The action has to be pursuant to a warrant that's based on probable cause. That's pretty reasonable. Wow. It's hard to believe and, that, that you yeah, to be I'm, told I'm, that. I'm, I'm, imagine that. <laughs> um, and, and it also has to particularly describe the person, place, or thing to be searched or seized. The action is also has to be in accordance with a legally recognized exception to warrant requirements. The action will have to uh, not infringe on any reasonable expectation of privacy the person may have. And this state or political subdivision uh, of the state collected the electronic data or metadata legally. All mm-hmm. of those five things have to be in place uh, in order for states to participate with federal programs um, uh, that in, in, they're invasively gathering up all of this data. Right. Uh, and also, the beautiful thing, one of the most innovative parts of the bill, is it goes a step farther by depriving federal agencies of state resources, such as water and electricity. Right. And what this does is it makes it extremely difficult for new mass spying and data retention facilities, such as the one in uh, the NSA facility in Bluffdale, Utah, which uses 177 million gallons of Utah's Ooh. water each day to cool the servers that it's using to house all of your data. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so the innovative part of this bill is it's 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 using the Constitution to hold the government, federal government, accountable for the rights that we're guaranteed to have uh, in relation to privacy. Mm-hmm. And it's also the the nexus. The, the the awesome part is it's taking away resources that they have to have in order to use these programs against us. Yeah. Uh, it's a really, really awesome bill. And uh, we're really excited to be working with uh, a lot of states across the nation to try yeah. to get this put in place. So can you just define for us material support? Because I think people think of actual, you know, material things like inanimate things that they would have to give over in order to support them. But that's not really what it means, is it? Right. Material support can be uh, anything. And it actually, it, it includes um, using state officers. If the, uh, oftentimes, uh, the federal government, especially like uh, in the instance of doing uh, raids and stuff like that, if you notice when the ATF does a raid, you, may have, you might have a few guys wearing ATF jackets, but the people who are actually carrying out the raid, are all local officers, sheriffs, and local police. Right. Um, the federal government uses um, state officers as resources quite often. Mm-hmm. And through these federal spying programs, often what happens uh, is illegally obtained data um, that the federal government comes across uh is shared with local officers, um, and the local officers utilize that in a number of shady ways right. uh, to build ca- cases against citizens all over the nation. Right. Uh, oftentimes, oftentimes, it's um, uh, based on uh, it, it's not terror related stuff. Right. It's it's drug war stuff, and yeah. all of all all of these programs were all sold to us as anti terrorist uh, stuff, but they're all using being uh, used domestically against. Uh, citizens here in the state. Right. So, they, they use something called, and I, I think a lot of people aren't familiar with, and that is called parallel construction. That's a nasty, nasty, nasty thing. Yeah. Uh, and it's, it's very dangerous. It's, yeah. it's a corrupt way, basically, for our law enforcement to get around the law. And so... Yeah. <laughs> It, 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 just quickly, uh, just a quick overview. Um, listeners, probably, if, if, you, if, if you haven't heard of, of parallel construction, you, you probably need to drill into it. it yeah. It's a really nasty thing. Uh, essentially, what happens is the federal government obtains uh, data against someone, and it's almost always obtained illegally without warrant uh, and without uh, proper um, uh, reasonable suspicion and, and things of that nature. As they gather this data, they share it with these local officers and say, hey, you've got a guy uh, in your locality who's involved in drugs. Mm-hmm. Here's what we have on him. At that point, the, uh, the local officers take that data that's been illegally obtained without a warrant, and then they build what's called a parallel case using that data um, so that they can go ahead, they, they, will, they will use that data and the knowledge to get warrants so that they can put together a case that supports 
the illegally obtained information that they can provide in court, and it looks as though they've done everything on the up and up when originally the entire reason that they opened an investigation on you was based on illegally obtained warrantless surveillance. Yeah, I, that, there's there's some great, there's a great video on YouTube that I watched about this a while back because we, we did this on my old show. We talked about it, and I'd never heard of it before. And yeah. it really just, it blows my mind because, you know, if if the system that we have, it's, it's what we have, right? And so we have these... Um, they're not peace officers anymore. I'm sorry. They're law enforcement officers. And this is, this is a big difference. And so these laws, they're enforcing them, whether they're actually ethical or moral or, or not like they they don't consider the law and what the law actually should be like the constitution itself. They're saying, well, we've been told we can do this. So we do it. And so I, I think that's, that's one of the things that people should really, really be concerned about parallel construction because of this, because it's like they can, the the federal agency can collect information on you I- illegally and without your knowledge and then they can tell the local police department hey this person is we believe is running drugs or whatever let's say and so they will find a reason to pull you over and mm-hmm. when they do they have all this other evidence and you're like how in the world did they get this from that but but that's how and and oftentimes the defense doesn't even know how that uh, information was obtained. It's just there all of a sudden. And, and so that doesn't sound like the kind of judicial system that anyone who cares about freedom would want. Well, and, and to even shed more light on how the, the federal government even knows that this practice of parallel construction and some of the ways that in which they obtain this information is shady. Mm-hmm. They, there's there's um, uh, non-disclosure agreements uh, with a lot of these. Uh, police departments, and should a court case, um, if if they prosecute a case and the defending attorney is smart enough to have uncovered some of the shady ways and practices in which this uh, information against their client was obtained, the um, police officers and these agencies have been instructed to drop the case or lose the case, uh, whether uh, instead of allowing the, the method with which the illegally obtained information actually arrived in their hands to, to, to keep that from actually coming out in a public court. So right. when, when that, that in itself says this is probably a pretty shady practice. And then uh, uh, taking, uh, taking it out a step further, former NSA uh, agent Bill Denny, who was actually, he was a whistleblower before um, Snowden, uh, he actually considers the practice of parallel uh, construction to be one of the most dangerous things in America since the Civil War. That may sound pretty hyperbolic. Um, that that may, may, may be a, sound a bit hyperbolic, but you have to take into consideration Bill Denny was on the inside of the NSA at the cusp of when these invasive programs were actually put in place. Yeah, the belly and of the what beast. He saw, yeah, what he saw was enough for him to resign. Um, wow. from from the agency so that says something hey clay this is this is Vinny funkmaster v here how you doing <laughs> hey good morning Vinny. uh i'm trying to keep up with all your heady talk here i got a, a call uh, uh somebody on the interwebs has interjected and, and want to know and i've got a, a question too but uh is this a state or a federal bill that we're talking this, about? This, this is a state bill again like like i was saying we're, we really can't rely on washington lawmakers to, right. to do the right thing here so what we focus on at, at the 10th amendment center we've um identified uh that 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 doing things at the state level uh can actually go a lot farther right. in protecting privacy than doing things at the federal level and what we do is um the cool thing about it is um, this is all pretty much based on the anti-commandeering doctrine. Um, yeah, I was going to ask you where this was kind of coming from. Yeah, it's 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 a well-established legal principle uh, known as the uh, anti-commandeering docu- doctrine. And uh, simply put, <laughs> the federal government cannot force states to help implement or enforce any federal act or program. Uh, there are about four or five Supreme Court cases upon which the anti-commandeering doctrine is based. Uh, these date back to, uh, I think, like 1842, I think, would be the cornerstone case. It was a case, uh, if your listeners want to look it up, it, it was uh, Prince versus the U.S. 
I think was the name of the case. And it serves as the cornerstone. Um, I think it was a New York case. and Was that before uh, or after Purple Rain? <laughs> <laughs> It was it was it was actually yeah, it was actually on Prince's first album. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I. How much static? I'm sorry to cut you off. Are you, are you getting static or traction? Is one political party giving you static, or are they both? Are they like, oh, this is good stuff, or or, or one side there, there, giving you some the, grief? The, the great thing is we this, this this is something that we can actually work on. Uh, we can work with both sides Beautiful. on this, and and we found we found a lot of commonality in that. The uh, one of the most Beautiful. We had this. Uh, this bill is actually on the books as law in two states already. California was the first one uh, to to actually put uh, a similar bill in place. It was a great first step in California. The bill itself, the final bill, it still needs some tweaking uh, to to really get uh, where we want it to be. A, a perfect model of this legislation just happened last uh, this June, June 2018, uh, in Michigan. And uh, essentially, th- this will give you some idea of, of the, uh, the how we were able to, to get around some the partisan nature of politics in Michigan. Uh, the bill passed the House resoundingly, uh, 107 to one, wow. and it passed Michigan Senate 37 to nothing. Yeah, uh, th- this is a strong bill. Anytime you have in any state legislator legislation. Uh, you rarely get numbers, voting numbers that are yeah. that are that that concrete. Uh, so that speaks to uh, how awesome a bill this is, and uh, it was really, really well and uh, warmly embraced in Michigan. And we are excited to report that this year, this legislative session, we're going to be seeing this bill introduced in the state of New York and also in the state of Missouri. So far. And we're working with a bunch of other states to see if they're interested in coming on board as well. That's great. I, you know, this kind of thing is is what people really need to get behind because the legislatures don't often move unless people are behind it. So uh, we got to take a quick break, guys. When we come back, we'll have more with Mr. Clay Davis. Don't go away. Well, guys, uh, we have on the line Mr. Clay Davis, and he is with the Tenth Amendment Center. And if you have not checked them out, you really, really, really should go over there. They've got great articles, um, a lot of great videos. Uh, Michael Bolden, who holds, heads that. Uh, Michael Bolton. Bolton. Not Bol- Michael Bolden, not Michael Bolton. Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. He's not over there trying to sing about, because we were talking about pirates How he's supposed to live without the NSA. <laughs> yeah, no. No, so. Uh, I don't care how long Michael Bolton grows his hair out. He's going bald, folks. Don't let it fool you. <laughs> yeah, but you should really check them out. They do the Lord's work. I mean, really, they are trying to help people right. take their government back. Everybody should be in in interested in this because that's right you know and i had a question for clay about that. yeah well clay are you there i'm here he is there oh, go shoot. ahead Vinny. hey i i gotta this is this is not your cross to bear first and foremost just uh but but i'm curious because like she says you are doing the lord's work if you're an american and this is something else somebody is angry because me and sherry aren't <laughs> I guess Republicans, and this is a conservative thing, and, and we're here, we're talking about real life American issues without a political slant. We're not trying to get anybody to vote one way or the other, but this is important talk. Or vote at all? Yeah, we're 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 trying to get people aware of these important situations, important. Uh, proceedings and all these types of things, these secret bills and these secret uh, things that people are okay with. And we get upset about stupid, just moronic things like flags and things like this. What, at the 10th Amendment Center, what do you do to try, or can you do this, or is this even in your wheelhouse, to advertise and reach a constantly uh, dis- enfranchised populace who are becoming more and more cynical and becoming more and more esoteric and becoming more and more, I only care about this guy's YouTube page and this particular video game, and I'm ignorant of everything else in my life. Do you, are, are you guys doing any evangelism, if you will, on this type of stuff? Uh, I'd say that that's probably a large part of what we do, Vinny. Uh, the messaging, and we've actually, uh, our, our our 
fearless leader, Michael, Michael Bolden, has gotten really, really awesome uh, uh, with videos. And uh, if, you, uh, if you follow us at all on Facebook uh, or on some of these other platforms, right. uh, we, there's constantly uh, there's new content being put out daily. Yeah. Uh, thousands and thousands of people uh, see these uh, on a daily basis. And it is. It's all educational. It's bringing um, some of these topics to the forefront. We hit on all kinds of things, uh, surveillance stuff, uh, uh, Second Amendment stuff, uh, pretty much uh, uh, Constitution, 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 all the time. Uh, a lot of what I do with the Tenth Amendment Center uh, is grassroots stuff, um, in addition to working with the legislators uh, in all 50 states uh, on bills that we support that are um, that are good constitutional bills. Um, I also do a lot of work at the grassroots level, working with people in local regions, uh, trying to get messaging out, trying to get awareness about some of these topics and some of these bills, trying to get support for some of these bills, uh, which is uh, again, if uh, any any of the listeners today uh, find the Fourth Amendment Protection Act to be something desirable that they would want to see maybe introduced in their own state legislature, uh, feel free to contact me at uh, clay.davis at tenthamendmentcenter.com. Send me an email. I'll work with you, too, and I'll work, I'll work with anybody. Uh, this is important work, and one of the reasons it's important um, – I, I get really passionate about this stuff. Sure. The right to the right to a fair trial, uh, freedom from search and seizure, the right to be secure in our papers and our possessions, freedom even freedom from providing quarter. Mm-hmm. Well, Virtually the Fourth every Amendment. right, every right that we have designated to us in the Constitution is a derivative of your fundamental right to privacy. Yeah. Our right to privacy is the anchor point from which all other rights derive. That's what I'm saying. The the Fourth Amendment may be the most American amendment, and it should it should be people on both sides of the aisles and independents and people of all sorts of political ideologies. This is something that we have to protect as a populace because mm-hmm. this it is really is. It, it it really protects the others. Um, cause yeah. once you, once that starts to fall away and you lose your life, your right to privacy, because other, other nations have lost their right to privacy, you know, BB, you know, uh, uh, England is, is always weirded out that we don't have video cameras everywhere. Yeah. And yeah. Look, like, look at what's going on in China right now. Mm-hmm. Ch- China's using the, basically the same, um, surveillance apparatus that we have here in our nation. And they're taking it beyond anything that we could comprehend. It, it, it's so Orwellian what's going on over there. Right. there every, every citizen is being surveilled um, through a number of different surveillance modes, God, one of which being facial, facial, facial recognition. <laughs> and each person, each citizen is now being assigned a good citizen score. Yes. And based on based on uh, what they do in their daily lives and what they believe and how they act, um, they get they get ranked by the state. Yeah, there's a that's that sounds I, like something from the Black Mirror. Yeah, I, yeah, man. Say, well, I'm it can Black happen Mirror here. We're, we're 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 one we're one flip of a ballot, a voting switch from getting the wrong tyrannical person mm. who could could rise to power here. Mm-hmm. Who could turn this surveillance apparatus on us in a way that that most Americans couldn't even yeah. fathom? And, the, and, the, and it's there. The, the the fundamental the groundwork is there. Yeah, it, it's all there, waiting to happen. I think people allow this stuff because they're they allow themselves to be so afraid that that safety does actually become more important to them than liberty. And mm-hmm. so we have to bring that back as a as a people and say personally myself individually am i going to allow my fear of what might happen erode my liberties for not only myself but for generations to come and i think you know about this um we're talking about the fourth amendment we have that 100 mile zone the buffer zone within the country right now this is already a practice that is done right now where the basically your fourth amendment rights are suspended within a hundred mile 
parts of the border of this country. That's a lot. Yep. Of, that's most of the population, yeah, that, right? I mean, that's most. Yeah. Of, most that is of a cities. lot. Yeah, because within a hundred miles, you've got most of the eastern yeah. seaboard, and that's where most All people live. So, yeah. well, and 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 the truth, the, the the truth of it. Let's just get right down to it. Through mass data collection and domestic spying, the case against you and everyone listening to this broadcast right now is already being built for a future use at a future date. Yeah. This is happening without your knowledge. It's happening without your consent. And it's sure as heck happening without reasonable suspicion that you have committed a crime. Yeah. And that's every one of us. Every, no one, not one person. Is, is protected from this right now. Yeah. And then, you know, they we, we have those stories that have been, you know, over the past several years where the NSA was using the back door not to spy on or listen in on Gross. foreign nationals calling, but on regular people making calls with, you know, citizens making calls within the country. So they do not hold themselves. The laws, they view the law as a way to entrap us. That's the yep. web that we get tangled in as a citizen. The these enforcement agencies, especially all the alphabet soup agencies, they believe they're above and outside those laws. And they think that that their mission, right, to protect the American people, which I don't think is really their agenda, but they think that trumps our rights and freedoms. And we as a people have to say, no, it doesn't. And we're willing to have unsafe liberty because liberty is not safe. Freedom means danger. Yeah. <laughs> there's no and there's no way anybody can be safe. There's no yeah. guarantee. Mm-hmm. There's no, no, no safety is a lot. Yeah. No. No. No government is ever going to make you safer. No. So M- most most of the programs, the federal programs that are in, in place, including the TSA and, and all of these things that have that have uh, taken place since uh, the 9/11 attacks, are all basically a false sense of security. Mm-hmm. Metal detectors, all of them. Uh, yeah. They're they're there on the surface. To make everyone uh, feel safer, uh, when in essence, really, uh, they, 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 there's no substantial evidence that suggests that any of these things have made us any safer, yeah. inclu- especially the TSA. Right. Yeah, it's it's unfortunate that we have to to you know that people are so divorced from their consti- you know the Constitution that we do that. So, and by the way. They're groping people today. The government is shut down, but TSA <laughs> right. is still rocking. Still groping people. The, the, rocking the, 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 That's right. The, well, the, guys, groping, the, the gro- groping parts are still, still, in, still in, in, uh, tank, in operation. Yep. And also, we have a caller. JB, are you there? Good morning, everybody. How are you? Good morning. Clay, are you there? Is Clay there? Uh, oh, I'll get him back on the okay, line. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, JB. Clay will be back in just a second. We'll yeah, have him. Buckmeister, how are you today? I'm doing good. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good, doing good. Uh, by the way, she led down some OJs. Uh, what a great call. Oh, what a great Yeah. Uh, Man, that, that's hey. one of the OG jams right there. <laughs> <laughs> the Lavert, well, Lavert and his son were both fabulous. Great, great. Anyway. Yeah. Well, I appreciate the show today because it is so critical. And, and I, it's re- interesting that this is all coming up right now, but that uh, the torture, any enumeration in the Constitution left. Oh, oh no. You cut his throat. Oh no. <laughs> so JB, you, you talk I'm about, sorry. You talk about all this liberty and you want everybody to have equal voice and you just cut the Clay's man's throat. On. Now Clay's on and I hung up on JV. I am sorry. See, this is why I need to not touch the buttons. Was that James don't Brown? Don't touch the, I know. I'll I need, do it. I need to let Ron handle this because you I... You can think about it, but don't do it. <laughs> the but shiny candy-like buttons. They're candy-like button. buttons yeah. over here. I, I want to put it in my mouth. And I'm a big girl, and I like me some sweets. <laughs> <laughs> so, JB, please call back in. I am so sorry to have hung up on you. Uh, I know you had an important um, question, and, and you wanted to get in on the conversation with Clay about the Fourth Amendment Protection Act. He's, so He sounds like he's probably still talking. Yeah, he doesn't he realize waited. he's such a long time i know you, i'm sorry you have, you have ruined his new year yeah so while we wait for jb and uh, please call back in i'm so sorry um but while we wait for him clay I, I one of the things i wanted to bring up in this and we talked about parallel construction and how you know the government actually collects that information is through things like stingrays um, which are those cell site simulators where they, they mm-hmm. intersect your call. And they killed a crocodile hunter. Yeah. Steve Irwin. <laughs> jerks. Right. 
I think we got JB back, don't we? Yeah. Oh, it looks like we do. I'm not touching anything, though. I'm going to let Roz handle it because it's her job and she's good at it. Here we go. JB. Oh, I, I blame the NSA. Not <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> I blame. I that your program. Yeah, I know there's a bill in Missouri 296, a bill, a, a, a law in Michigan, a, a law in California. They all the same basic framework you have. Essentially, yes. Uh, Missouri, last year, Missouri had a bill pass the House, but it actually got killed in the Senate. I didn't know uh, it had been killed. Yeah, um, but a uh, similar bill is being re- reintroduced, has already been reintroduced in Missouri this year, and it is almost word for word uh, the model legislation. It looked that, just like uh, what you that described we, today. Yeah, yeah, it's it's almost the, the Missouri the piece of legislation in Missouri is almost word for word uh, the model legislation that the Tenth Amendment Center supports. I so, believe the yeah, Fourth yeah. Amendment Sanctuary City program is critical to our survival. I agree. If we don't if we don't provide if we don't provide a sanctuary city and deny material support from these monsters. Think about what they're doing in China. Chinese Catholics that were legal a few days mm-hmm. ago now are being prosecuted, having broken laws, which they, which weren't in effect, thrown into prison, and have their numbers, the social numbers reduced, the stuff that was legal before. Mm-hmm. And now mm-hmm. they're all being bundled off, and they're having this sort of this campaign, uh, this anti-game <clears throat> campaign, and they're calling anybody who was a, 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 a traditional Catholic uh, a gang and, a, and a, an evil to the community because they have anti-government activities and beliefs. And the, this NSA thing, this double bounce where you go two bounces away and you scoop up all this dough and you give this information to the local authorities, they look here, look here, look here. Theoretically, they could, with so much data, they could gather not just a real case against somebody who actually did something, but a, a, a circumstantial case against anybody yes. based on where you were, your associate, a phone call, a comment, a word, an email you made, and make a circumstantial case against anybody, and how would you prove you didn't do it? They could do this now if they wanted to. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah it's, terrifying. It's, also, it terrifying. In, in China, they're, they're, using, they're uh, also utilizing re-education camps. Uh, oh, part yeah, of their, favorite spot. Their, well, they've got them lined yeah, up for us, yeah. too. Don't worry about that. But this <laughs> well, they've actually, they, in China, they've put in uh, 1.2 million Muslims are in so concentration camps. Yeah. 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 Christians yeah. are going. Pretty, you know, we know how they treat this idea that they're not, this is a model. This is who our social media giants are working with, although Google said they, they left, but they want to get in, in on this. They y'all want to get in on this. Uh, what a great measure for them. So if you don't think this is important, remember, every single word you strike on your computer, every letter, even if you delete it, is kept. Yeah. Everything mm-hmm. you've deleted is kept. Yep. Google has it all, or Twitter has mm-hmm. it all. Everybody that have this all. That's horrifying they could, for they, me. They, they yeah. could construct any kind of case against you based on a comment. Or say, I said, Oh, I wish that place would burn down. Right. And I went ahead and did that. If there is a comment you said, you didn't say that, but they completed it as they do. And that's a, And this is a very, very serious problem. If you look through every information about what you ever written, said, or done, you can construct a case for anything, for starting the Chicago fire and right. bring it to this damn FISA court that takes no evidence, whatever. Get a, well, just yes. make just it think about every time you've used humor or ever, the colloquialism or I can't stand my wife or I hate my wife. Right. She ends up dead. What? You know, I was just angry at her for something. I love her to death. You know, they can use anything uh, against you or any yeah. associate. Oh, J- JB, the one, one thing to keep in mind, and this is kind of alarming, too, because of the nature of the work that I do um, as an activist. Uh, and a lot of my work is... They're listening, Clay. <laughs> well, it, it, you better believe more, they are. It, 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 they are, and even more than that, because of the nature of the work that I do in its relation to the surveillance state, even people that make posts on my social media threads, if they engage me in anything that I've posted uh, that may have a, a bent of surveillance or anti-surveillance to it, it's very likely that the NSA will keep an eye on those people that posted in my thread for a minimum of 60 days just for simply making a post or commenting on something that I posted. Yeah. Um, So that, that that's opening people up to being looked at and scrutinized for using their freedom, freedom of speech. And this is one of the things that we have to remember too, is that 
the definition of terrorism is so vague mm. that they can claim terrorism on really anybody who speaks against the state. That was one of the things that uh, I saw in a, a show we did a while back with um, just reading what they had defined, what they wanted to define it as. And uh, we have to remember that speaking out against our government is a foundational principle of America. Yeah. Like that is exactly what what the founders did. They spoke out against their government. Their government didn't listen. So they had a revolution to change yep. things up. And we were never intended to have this. I, I was reading in, in an article you wrote, Clay, for the 10th Amendment Center. Um, and JB, did you have any other questions? Well, I have one comment when you finish. And okay. I'll shut up. Okay. <laughs> um, just that, uh, that just as a, an example <clears throat> to the kinds of things that they do, these FISA courts, you know, they've, they've gotten warrants on 99.9% oh, yeah. of the foreign, uh, the warrants that have come before them. But just one day after president Trump, Trump signed the six year FISA extension into law, the news was leaked about the now infamous bought and paid for FISA memo that was provided to a FISA court judge and used as the basis upon which the court granted authorization to federal <laughs> agencies seeking to surveil the Trump campaign. <laughs> so these are the kinds of things that they do. And, and yep. if they'll do it to politicians at the highest level, who are, you know, don't kid yourself that they're not collecting on servers and keeping, especially people who speak up. And that's that's a fear tactic. It's mm. that we will bring you down if you speak up against us, and then that keeps other people from speaking up. Right. So, Remember this, as AI gets better, the only thing saving us now is that Eric Schmidt doesn't have perfect AI. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If they did, a soulless AI, then we'd all be, we'd be victims of Rocco Basilisk. Yeah. Going in the mm-hmm. future and looking back and saying, who supported us? Who was with us? Who was against us? By your very nature, by your life, by your conduct. Even if you didn't write what Lysander Spinner wrote or what libertarians yeah. write, your, your conduct, your thoughts, your ideas, now you're a threat to the state. That's and they right. will try to punish us now. Chinese are retroactively punishing people who acted legally right. because they can. Right. If they can do this, they will do this. Right. Mm-hmm. And we are already whether, seeing Whether you're that. a believer in God or not, you either... When people do the right thing, they go into the lion's den, they go into the fire, they go into the prison, re-education camp. Sometimes they live and sometimes they don't. But that's where they always go. That would be the price for freedom unless we stop this now. And yep. this yeah. will not stop itself. If they get perfect AI, we're all cooked. Yeah. And the libertarians are going first, by the way. Right. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Well, that was a happy note. But you know what? If they're listening today, i got a message for you. In the NSA, bite me. Thank you. We won't right, give up. JB. We won't surrender. <laughs> here, here. So fight me. Love yeah. you, folks. Thank you. Thank you, JB. We appreciate your Thanks, call. JB. Yeah, I, I think you know that's exactly what we were talking about. What this like collection of you know information, data, all that stuff that they are doing right now, and they know is outside the law. But the law enforcement pass it on to the politicians, and the politicians couldn't do it without them, though. So this is why we have to hold our law enforcement to a higher standard and say morality and legality are not the same thing. And if an, a law is wrong, it's wrong for you to enforce. We yeah. need peace officers, not more law enforcement officers. We need Amen. men and women who are willing to step up and say, I will not enforce this because it's it's outside the purview of the Constitution. So <laughs> you've won another chance, Mr. Davis. <laughs> and a toaster. Hey, hey <laughs> not <now>. a bank. <laughs> yeah, so, so tell us, Clay, um, and I do appreciate you staying through the break. I'm sorry that Absolutely. I cut you off there at the end. Um, what? Where can we find the Tenth Amendment Center? Where can people? Uh, you'll give your, you know, your address again, so we can get this Fourth Amendment Protection Act going in the state of Tennessee. Like, let's contact our our peeps here and get it working. Yeah, if if you'd like to support our work, especially my work uh, with the Fourth Amendment Protection Act, you can follow all of that and get all the details as well as everything else that we do at the 10th Amendment Center at the 10th Amendment Center dot com. And if you get on there a little bit later today, I'm pretty sure I have a brand new article getting posted uh, later on this morning Absolutely. that uh, is talking about how all of everyone's data is not only getting snatched up, but it's getting scatter blasted. Uh, across the entire nation to just about every three-letter agency and state and local agency uh, in the land. Yeah. Uh, so if you'd like to find out about not only how it's getting snatched up, but how your data is being shared, 
at the Tenth Amendment Center website, www.tenthamendmentcenter.com. And there should be some fresh material about that coming out later on today. If you're interested in working with me on uh, getting the Fourth Amendment Protection Act introduced in your state, please email me at clay, C-L-A-Y, dot Davis at TenthAmendmentCenter.com. Is that numerical will... or is that spelled out, Tenth, Clay? Uh, it's actually spelled out, okay. T-E-N-T-H, AmendmentCenter.com. And I will uh, we'll get we'll get the process rolling to see if we can get uh, get this wonderful, innovative, uh, awesome bill that protects everyone's privacy introduced in your home state. That'd be great. Yeah, and and I also wanted to mention that uh, Michael Bolden, who uh, heads up the Tenth <laughs> Amendment Center. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he he also has a uh, a podcast that he does called Good Morning Liberty. And, yes, it's and wonderful. Yeah, he's a great, you know, he's a young guy and he's attractive and people like to look at him, you know, and, but the stuff he says is so on point. Um, so I think, you know, you were talking earlier, Vinny, about what are they doing to get people to to listen. And I yeah, think that's that's part out. of it is is he's doing more and more just education. Like I've I've gotten so much education about That's what we need, the man, in this and country. The constitution. We, and not to cut you off, but I guess I'm cutting you off. <laughs> I mean, it, we need we need information. Mm-hmm. We don't need editorial. I'm sick of it. You turn mm-hmm. on, you watch the TV, no matter if you left wing, right wing, you you realize that things are a sphere and you're not on this one-dimensional line. Mm-hmm. You're being fed opinion, yeah, and we need facts. But you know, I think some of that falls on our shoulders, right? As people, Absolutely. because so many people look to those pundits, the talking heads, and their favorite politicians to tell them what to think. And that's why George Washington said yeah. he was against political parties in the first place, because exactly. you're going to find somebody that you're going to side with sometime, and you're going to stop thinking, yeah. and you're just going to let that demagogue pour. It's like a, it's like a Pink Floyd video or something. Yeah. Just this, blah, <laughs> this just junk into your head, yeah. and you don't think for yourself and go, "Wait a minute, that doesn't jive right no. with me." Yeah, and I, I think if, that's. If you, go ahead, Clay. If, if, if you like factual reporting, um, and and I, I can't I can't speak highly enough of my my partner, the communications director of the Tenth Amendment Center, Mike Mike Meharry. Yeah, it, his reporting on everything we do at the Tenth Amendment Center is laden with fact. Mm-hmm. And he, he <laughs> single-handedly um, what a disseminates... He, he, yeah, he disseminates some of, the, some of the greatest educational material and resources uh, that I've seen in the Liberty Movement. Yeah. Um, he does a great job. This guy's got a writing background and a really, really honest, clean approach to how he packages his uh, his educational materials and he reports on on virtually everything we do. Yeah. Um, so one one of the things you're going to see if you open up the Tenth Amendment website today is you're going to see a lot of Michael Meharry's work and I highly recommend it. It's good stuff. Yeah. And and just full disclosure, Mike Meharry has a couple podcasts on the Little L Productions Network that I'm a part of. So he does Godarchy and sports ball and he he was a journalist for years um and he still is but he he's been a sports writer and so he's really credible and the guy is is like you said he's a treasure trove of knowledge on the constitution and really um is. a lot of times people think they know things they don't really know like we've been taught things that aren't accurate well, and so he really No let's just start I'm a New York Jets up. fan is there any way clay <laughs> you can pass a bill to get the Jets in the playoffs the next couple of seasons because it's been bleak, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm a Washington Redskins fan, and I haven't been in. I haven't had anything to cheer about since 1992. So I'm, <laughs> I'm really not not really worried. The about well the is Jets, dry. Manny. I'm I'm really sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, Clay, we we sure appreciate you uh, hanging out a little extra with us. I know I kept you longer than. Than planned, but I do appreciate your graciousness. And give to him come a round. This, is a, this is a superhero, folks. Yeah. This is a guy. People talk about guys that can throw the football 70 yards down the field. This is a guy out there trying to protect the Fourth Amendment, and his crew are doing some amazing things. So, man, check this guy out. And this is something, if you're in the car listening to this jive, and you're like, well, this sounds boring. Is This is what it means to be an American is what this guy's is working on. This isn't political. This isn't left or right. This is something that affects everybody. Good, evil, yeah. ugly, 
bad, <laughs> funky, and unfunky. Clay, you're a hero, hey. and I take my afro off to you. Hey, Vinny, thank you so much. That that really, really means a lot to me, man. I, I can't tell you how much that means. And just to have uh, people like you and Sherry and, and everyone else that supports our work, it really is very meaningful to us. And I hope hope some folks uh, learned a few things this morning, and I hope uh, we may have touched a few people and open some eyes and i really really thank you guys for the opportunity to talk today great thank you so much clay and we will speak soon